Tonight on Sports Saturday, lightning crashes and Bama stuffs the Hoot Owls in their home opener. It wasn't too bad. Plus, a Saturday 2-4 get in the SEC. Did everyone get out alive? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. It's a great show. Yeah, well, how about we work on improving that? Okay. It's a tremendous show. Good. No secret handshake required. Sports Saturday starts right now. From the campus of the University of Alabama, live sports. From Alabama's sports team, this is WVUA Sports. It was a big play in a day that was full of them for the Crimson Tide. Amari Cooper, he's catching everything lately. 13 catches for him today. This one goes for 52 yards to give Alabama what would be an insurmountable 14 to nothing lead against FAU. And welcome in everybody to Sports Saturday. I'm BJ Milliken. We're here with you for the next 15 minutes getting you caught up on a wonderful Saturday of college football. We begin with Alabama's debut inside these very walls. Bama came in as 40 point favorites against Florida Atlantic. Tide has not lost a non-conference regular season game since 07. That's a long time, people. Blake Sims early, though, made sure that they wouldn't do that today either. The seven yard run diving into the end zone. Tide led seven zip early. Nick Saban was happy about that, but not as happy as Amari Cooper. We've already seen this play once. We show it to you again. He keeps catching these passes, takes this one 52 yards, turning on the afterburners. Huge game for Amari. 13 receptions, 189 receiving yards. Hey, um, does anybody remember Kenyon Drake? There he is, catching the pass from Blake Sims right up the sideline. That's 39 yards, a quick 21 to nothing lead before anyone even got to their chairs. Jake Coker enters the game in this one in the second quarter, throws his first touchdown pass, three yards to Jalston Fowler. Nice catch there. Coker threw for 202 yards himself. Kenyon Drake, remember him? He got in the end zone a little bit ago. He does it again with his legs. Bama wins big, 41 to nothing, in a game shortened by Lightning. Nick Saban says it was good, but not good enough. I like the intensity that we played with, and, uh, but I also think that there's a lot of things that we did well. Uh, but also some things that mistakes that we made, which would be a critical, whether it was what we did right before the end of the half, you know, taking a sack when we could have kicked a field goal, calling the wrong play basically and fumbling the ball on the you know, opening drive of the second half. Some of those types of things are not the kind of things that you'd like to happen, but uh, are opportunities for, you know, our players to, to learn. You know, Amari Cooper, you know, played an outstanding game again today. You know, I thought our offense, uh, we didn't punt all day, but we didn't finish drives in the red area, which is something that we definitely need to um, be able to continue to work on. And here are those final numbers. Amari Cooper just bonkers. Tied Alabama's all-time record for receptions in a game with 13. 25 receptions for Amari in the first two games. That's more than half of what he had all last year. I'd say he's tearing it. Uh, sports director Gary Harris and Rodney Orr of TiderInsider.com gave us their thoughts after Alabama improved to 2-0 in 2014. Guys? Thanks, BJ. Rodney, I don't know where to start. Interesting game. Uh, early kick, SEC Network. The game was called at the 7.53 mark of the fourth quarter due to lightning. Amari Cooper played two and a half quarters, tied the reception record with 13 catches. Both quarterbacks combined to throw for 400 yards, over 600 yards of offense in a shortened game. Defense had its moments gets the shutout, but still there were some mistakes on both sides of the ball. Just an interesting game. Yeah, but I did think Alabama played with a little more confidence. I know the competition maybe isn't quite what it was last week, Gary, but I thought Alabama came out and did what they had to do in terms of taking control of the game right off the bat. You had two quarterbacks throw for over 200 yards. I'd like to know when the last time that would happen in a single game for Alabama. You know, last week you had two 100-yard rushers. We're kind of starting to see Lane Kiffin's offense, a lot of balance, a lot of guys getting involved, so I think that's really good to see. And how about Amari Cooper, 25 catches in two games. It's unbelievable. Blake Sims started with the first offense, and, and boy, they were sharp early on. Yeah, they really were, Gary, and Blake made some nice throws. I mean, you know, on the roll, standing in the pocket. A lot of the throws in, uh, early on were the quick throws to the sidelines, but still they were executed really well. The receivers blocked well and sprung some of those plays. I thought Blake did a good job in terms of rolling out and making some passes, and he had some good runs, too. The offense, though, in the red zone, a couple of failed opportunities. That's something to work on. Another easy one on paper next week against Southern Mississippi. Then it's the Florida Gators on the 20th. BJ, back to you. 
Thanks, guys. Hey, we're just getting cranked up on Sports Saturday. Coming up, a look around the SEC on what we dubbed Cupcake Saturday. Did any of those pastries sneak up on any SEC teams? We'll check on that. Plus, we'll take a closer look at the Blake Sims, Jake Coker uh, performance at quarterback position today against FAU. We'll hear what both of them had to say after the game. Hey, the crowds are long gone in Tuscaloosa, but they're home celebrating a victory. Hey, keep celebrating with us when we come back right here on Sports Saturday. Stay with us. Last week, they took a lot of criticism against West Virginia, but today the Bama defense stood tall, shut out Florida Atlantic. It's 14th shutout of the Nick Saban era, and the 12th time in the last 19 games, Alabama held the opponent scoreless in the first half. So a big time game for the defense. Another position of interest in this ball game, of course, was the performance of Alabama's quarterbacks with the exception of a couple of garbage time snaps. Today was the first time we saw Jake Coker in extended action, but it was Blake Sims who immediately showed everyone why he's taking the first team snaps. He looked decisive, very sharp, only missing on a couple of passes all day. The rotation between the elusive Sims and the drop back Coker is one that was very effective today and as both continue to say that they're happy with their situation. Uh, I'm just blessed to be in the situation that I am right now and happy to be under Coach Saban and Coach Kiffin. And uh, whenever my number's called, I'm going to be ready and ready to play and be uh, executed to play the best way I can. I mean, it was, it was real nice getting there and play as much as I did. And Especially when when it was still you know it still mattered I guess to, you know but uh, it was it was real fun I'm just I'm just happy to be out there man there you go and how about both of those guys spreading the love nine different receivers caught passes today Cooper of course caught a bundle of them redshirt freshman Ardarius Stewart of Fultondale gets into the action with three catches on the day if you happen to look at the SEC schedule this weekend you may have sounded like this uh. Yeah, it was pretty bad, but we will go through these games and get you through them nonetheless. The first one we go to, Auburn hosting San Jose State. Spirit soaring in pregame. Nick Marshall hoped to do some soaring himself. He gets the start, and he was pretty impressive. Here he is finding Ricardo Lewis for the little four-yard touchdown pass, his first one on the year. And later on, a little zone read action. He does this very well. Cameron Artis Payne has the ball, though, and he's into the end zone, one of the first of three scores for Cappy. But nothing, nothing was prettier than this. Quan Bray, watch him. Taking this punt to the house. No, you cannot tackle him. He is in the end zone. Auburn cruises to a 59-13 victory. The only SEC versus SEC game today. Vanderbilt fans, I'm going to warn you, avert your eyes. It's not pretty. Ole Miss goes to work early. Jalen Walton, juke button, 20 yards for the score. Vanderbilt, I wish I had better news, guys. It's all bad. Dr. Bo Wallace gets surgical, scrambles, finds Cody Core. He does the rest. The Rebs take the scalpel to Vanderbilt, 41-3. to UAB visiting Hale State. Don't adjust your television, folks. Those are cowbells. UAB quarterback Cody Clemens, don't do that. Throwing it away. Preston Smith picks it off, takes it to the house. There are those cowbells. The Blazers, though, hung in there. Jeremiah Briscoe. He was a bullfrog, 88-yard bomb. Jerome Marcus Nelson right into your living room. 231 yards passing for Jeremiah, but hey, today's state was just a little better. Josh Robinson with the 18-yard score. State gets the win, 47-34. to The old ball coach in South Carolina trying to avoid an 0-2 start against East Carolina. Mike Davis running like this is going to help that cause. Watch him bust up the middle. Charles almost got tripped up there, but he cuts it back to the outside. He is in the end zone. Gamecocks up 7-6. to six. But ahoy! The Pirates sail back down the field. Chris Harrison finds a seam, takes this one into the end zone 10 yards. ECU making Mr. Spurrier sweat a little bit. Look at that. The visor's still on, though. Remember Mike Davis? He can catch the ball, too. Watch this. This one set up a run and score. South Carolina ends up surviving this game 33 to 23. Let's take a look at some of the other scores around the league. Tennessee, Mizzou, Kentucky all pick up wins. Philip Ely, the former Crimson Tide quarterback, tears his ACL in that game against Mizzou. So best wishes to him. Hopefully he'll get back to action. Here are the other rental wins today. Arkansas, Florida doing what he has to be illegal in most states, I'm sure. LSU all over Sam Houston and A&M and Lamar in a long weather delay. Aggies will name their score in this one. Next on the show, there's a Heisman Trophy candidate who grew up right here in Alabama. He made a huge play 
to help his team escape an upset. We're going to show you that next. Plus, it's the first annual Tiger Bowl. West Alabama visited Stillman. We've got the highlights and the post-game reaction when Sports Saturday rolls on. 19th ranked Nebraska on the ropes today against McNeese State, tied at 24, 30 seconds to go. Never fear, they have Amir, as in Amir Abdullah, the pride of Homewood. Look at that, taking it to the distance, saving Bo Pelini from a very interesting Monday press conference. Let's take a look at some other top 25 scores from around the nation. Kansas State survived a scare at Iowa State. They'll host Auburn this week. USC with a big win over Stanford and a bad day for the state of Michigan. State and the Wolverines on the short end today. Michigan shut out for the first time since 1984. Wow. You know, it's always nice when a rivalry gets renewed. Well, West Alabama and Stillman have played three times in history, but the last time they met was 2003. Today, they found themselves on the field together again in what has been dubbed the Tiger Bowl because they're both Tigers. Here come the Stillman Tigers doing that slow walk onto the field. Intimidating. They'd have to speed up, though, to catch Kyle Caldwell. Here he is, the zone read magician calling his own number. He takes it to the end zone. Later, it's going to be Caldwell giving it to his good buddy Jabari Parker, who takes it, I'm sorry, Baker, who takes it to uh, seven yards to the house, baking something nice. Things not looking good for Stillman, though. They do get in the end zone here. They get on the scoreboard. Javante Thurman goes a long way with this one. Not enough, though. West Alabama is going to get the 44-20 to win in that nice trophy. We talk, we talk to our guys all the time about when something goes off schedule, don't lose your cool, just, just roll with it and then react, respond. And They did a great job doing that. We came out here fired up to start the game after, a, I think, an hour and a half delay. And, you know, that's, that's hard to do. That's hard to stay up and stay that intense for so long. And those guys, man, I love, I love that team. I wouldn't take anybody else to battle. There you go. Here's the rest of the in-state scoreboard. Jack State picks up a big overtime win against Chattanooga. John Gross, first win for the Gamecocks. South Alabama and Miles also get big wins today. That's all the time we have for tonight, but don't forget plenty of more sports coverage. Tune in back here tomorrow at 10 o'clock, and anytime you can head to WVUATV.com. Find Tider Insider TV, Crimson Tide Kickoff, much more on the website. We're going to leave you with some of the atmosphere from today at Brian Denny Stadium. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good night.